67 tonight. The Bible says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Let's pray. Father, we do bless you. We thank you for your choice blessings. We thank you that daily you loadeth us with benefits. And God, you have been good to us, and God, we are so thankful for your kindness toward us. God, you didn't have to be good to us, but God, we're thankful that you loved us and you extended grace to us, and we do bless your holy name. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now, Lord, I pray for Brother Ron. You'd touch him tonight, and you'd help him. I pray for Samantha. You'd help her as well. I pray for Caitlin. Lord, you'd touch her throat and help her. I do pray tonight, Father, for those that are traveling. I pray for this young lady by the name of Morgan that, Lord, is having complications in her pregnancy and they're taking the baby tonight. God, I pray for her and the baby that all would be well. And God, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart here tonight. God, I pray you'd sit down amongst us, help us from the scriptures, grow our faith, and God, bless as only you can. And I do pray, if there's any amongst us unsaved, lost without Christ, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. God, I do pray that, Lord, you'd help your people. Lord, you'd strengthen them. You'd encourage them. You'd edify them. And Lord, I pray you'd do something so real for them, even in this service, that, Lord, in the week to follow, others would take notice. Now, Father, I pray you'd be glorified magnified in everything that's said and done. Help us tonight, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to notice, first of all, uh, the plea for the Lord's mercy. Look in verse number 1. God be merciful unto us uh, and bless us uh, and cause his face to shine upon us, uh, Selah. Boy, I would to God somebody get a hold of the horns of the altar uh, and get... Uh, God's mercy on the scene. If there's anything we need tonight, uh, we need the merciful hand of God and we need His face to shine upon us uh, so the world would take note uh, that there is hope, uh, that there is help, uh, and it's found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we see a plea for mercy. Uh, and I would to God, uh, uh, we'd get rid of our shopping list uh, and we'd start asking God to get on the scene uh, so folks see Him high and lifted up in our midst. Uh, we not only see a plea for mercy, but notice, if you will, uh, a plea for the Lord's manner. Look in verse number 2. Uh, it says that thy way, or that the manner of the Lord, uh, may be known upon the earth. Uh, thy saving health among all nations. Uh, I would to God that everywhere where you find mankind, uh, you'd find the way of the Lord. Uh, you'd find the manner of God uh, uh, being uh, 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 promoted and folks uh, uh, falling in love with the great God of glory. Uh, I would to God that folks... Uh, 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 instead of looking uh, uh, for this way or that way or this religion or that religion, they'd find uh, uh, what they need for their soul is the manner and the way of the Lord. Uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. We need folks to notice uh, his manner and his way. And then we find in verses 4 through 7 a plea for the millennial reign. Look what it says in verse number 4. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Uh, say that has not came to pass yet. But one day it will. 
There's coming today, you find in Revelation chapter number 19 that the Lord Jesus comes back, uh, the righteous judge, uh, with a sharp two-edged sword that comes out of his mouth, uh, and he comes in the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Uh, uh, we find in Zechariah chapter number 14 that he's going to land uh, 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 there on the mount, uh, and he's going to split the mount. Uh, and can I say that day he's going to put an end to the battle that's in the valley of Megiddo, uh, uh, the battle of Armageddon, uh, when all nations have turned against Israel uh, and he's going to show up and fight uh, uh, for Israel. Uh, you and I that have saved, uh, we'd been raptured out seven years prior to that. We're coming back with him on white horses. Uh, and then uh, uh, when he puts into all of that, uh, he's going to ascend to the throne of David uh, and set up uh, his millennial reign on earth for a thousand years. Uh, what a day that's going to be. Uh, Isaiah chapter number 11 uh, says this about the millennial reign. And verse number 4 it says, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. Does not uh, Psalm 67 talk about him uh, judging people righteously? Uh, uh, Isaiah 4 11, But with righteousness uh, shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. Uh, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. Uh, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Uh, and righteousness shall shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins uh, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb uh, and the leopard shall lay, lie down with the kid uh, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together uh, and a little child shall lead them uh, and the cow and the bear shall feed uh, their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox uh, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp uh, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice traces den. Uh, they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Uh, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord uh, as the waters cover the sea. Uh, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse uh, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Uh, to it shall Gentiles seek uh, and his rest shall be glorious. Uh, in Isaiah 12 verse 4 uh, it says and in that day shall you say praise the Lord. Uh, call upon his name. Uh, declare his doings among the people. Uh, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, uh, for he hath done excellent things. Uh, this is known in all the earth. Uh, cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of the Zion, uh, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Uh, there's coming a day. He's going to set up his millennial reign. Now that's important to know. It's important to understand the end times. Now, we don't uh, understand all about it because God didn't tell us all about it, but He did tell us enough to know what is going to transpire. Why is that important? Because there's a lot of denominations that don't understand it. A lot of missionary Baptists believe in a general judgment. They think the trumpet's going to blow, and that's it. Everybody's going to be judged by God. They don't understand uh, uh, the different judgments in the Bible, the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Uh, 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 I've talked to uh, uh, missionary Baptists that don't believe uh, in, in the millennial reign. They don't believe in eschatology as the Bible teaches it. Uh, and when I show them the verses on the millennial reign, when I show them that uh, uh, the lion's going to lay down uh, 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 and the cow and the bear and, and they're, they're going to eat straw and the child can play over the whole of the asp uh, and the uh, uh, root of Jesse, the Lord Jesus himself uh, is going to rule and reign from the throne of David. When you show them those verses, you say, what, when did all that happen then? I've heard the Garden of Eden. Well, there wasn't any children in the Garden of Eden. So you tell them that. And then they go, well, I don't know. But I don't believe it. Uh, so it's important to understand your scriptures and what we believe and why we believe it. That's why we need to rightly divide the scriptures. We find here in Psalm 67, the psalmist is pleading for the millennial reign when the Lord Jesus uh, will rule on the earth and judge righteously uh, and be in the midst of the people. And what a day that's going to be. By the way, we're going to rule and reign with him. It does matter how you live in this life. People say, preacher, why do you preach so hard on things? Because it matters how we live. Because how faithful we are in this life will determine how we'll reign with Him in the next life. 
those that are faithful, those that uh, 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 are obedient to the Lord, you'll reign over much. But those who aren't, you'll reign over little. I sure don't want to reign over the trash collection system. But some of us may. Uh, but I, I, I was reading this psalm, and I'm interested in verse number 2. The Bible says that thy way may be known upon earth. And I want to preach for just a few minutes tonight on that his way may be known. That his way may be known. It ought to be the burden of every child of God that the world comes to know God. That ought to be our burden, that they may come to know the Lord, that His way may be known. So how's that going to happen? We all will stand and say we're not Calvinist, but if we don't do anything to make His way be known, we're practical Calvinists, aren't we? We just think that somehow, some way, they're going to wake up and find out. No. God commissioned His church to preach the gospel to every creature. So how is His way going to be made known? Can I say, first of all, for His way to be made known, He must be experienced. You can't tell somebody about something you don't know. He must be experienced. Huh? Now... Brother Thad, my friend over here, <laughs> you should have seen the look on his eyes right there. He's like, oh, no. For years, he's been telling me about how good P.F. Chang's is. Have you not? And you tried to get me to go. But I don't know anything about it. And I told him I won't. I did tell him I would go with him but I'd stop by the cheeseburger and take it in and eat the cheeseburger while he's eating all that ping pong stuff. You know what I'm saying? Huh? I ain't going to do it. We heard today, Chinese food slop. Not doing it. But I couldn't tell anybody anything about that place because I've never experienced it. There are a lot of things that I've never experienced. I'll never forget, a couple years ago, Miss Annette, I went to the Grand Canyon for the first time. I want to tell you, that is one of the most beautiful things. I, I mean, I, we've been to Hawaii. We've seen sunsets on the beach, but there was just something about looking at that big hole in the ground. That was something. We sat there for hours and looked at a hole. It was almost spiritual. It was so beautiful. To think that God allowed a flood to carve that out and the beauty that remains. But friend, if you've never seen it or experienced, you have no idea what I'm talking about. As soon as I said to Grand Canyon, I seen Brother Jim's head going. Because he's been there. He lived out there. He's seen it. He's experienced it. When you've experienced it, you can let others know about it. Uh, my dear friends, if you've experienced the Lord Jesus Christ, that ought to be the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Uh, hey, uh, we have no problem talking about our children. We have no problem talking about our grandchildren. Uh, we have no problem talking about our favorite sports teams. Uh, why do we have a problem talking about the greatest thing that ever happened to us? Uh, we ought to make His way known. Uh, let people know like that woman at the well. Uh, she went into town and said, Come see a man uh, that told me all things ever I did. Is this not the Christ? Uh, and they came out, uh, and many believed on him. Uh, hey, uh, we ought to make his way known. Uh, let folks know, hey, uh, I found the answer to life. Uh, I found the hope of all hopes. Uh, I found joy unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, and let them know it's found in a person, uh, and his name is Jesus, uh, can I say, the only way His way will be made known, He must be experienced. You know how it is. Before you got saved, you didn't know anything about Him. Amen. People tried to tell you, but, but then you met Him. 
Uh, and you can't deny there's just something about him. Can I say, in order for his way to be made known, he must be experienced. Can I say this? In order for his way to be made known, he must be embraced. Can I say to know him is one thing, to embrace him is another thing. See, you can know him, but not be in fellowship with him, and you're not going to be able to make his way known. But if you've embraced him, and you've embraced his truths, and his word is in your heart as a burning fire shut up in your bones. Uh, if you've got a passion for him and his word, uh, for his church, uh, for everything that he has blessed you with, uh, it is no problem uh, for you to make his way known. But if he's an afterthought, if he comes in second place in your life, you're not going to make his way known. How can we make his way known, preacher? He must be experienced. He must be embraced. Can I say this? If we're going to make his way known, he must be elevated. Amen. Did he not say, and I, if I be lifted up, draw all men unto me? Yeah. Amen. Can I say we have no problem elevating the church? I'm not talking about elevating the doctrine of the local church. I'm talking about, oh, you need to come to Emmanuel Baptist Church. We have no problem uh, elevating our favorite preachers. I've got favorites and so do you. And listen, there's nothing wrong with having preachers that you love and you esteem them highly for their work's sake. But oh, if all they ever do is hear, or all they ever hear is about the church name, or a preacher's name, uh, or this uh, 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 ministry, or that ministry, uh, and they never hear about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, uh, the name that's above every name, uh, uh, the only name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Uh, we've got to elevate Him. Uh, hey, what do you offer down there at the church? We offer Jesus. Uh, hey, what do you preach down there at the church? Jesus. Uh, who's your favorite preacher? Jesus. Uh, hey, uh, if we elevate him, his way will be made known. Amen. We're all guilty of elevating a lot. We want people to come to church. And we want people to hear certain preachers. And I, I listen, I'm a big African. You've heard me preach it, preach it, preach it. It's not about the, the messenger. It's about the message. But there are certain messengers that whatever gifts God has given them, they resonate with us a little bit different. But you still got to pay attention to the message. But we're guilty of promoting everything but what we should be promoting. His name is Jesus. That His way may be made known. How, how is His way going to be made known? He has to be experienced, has to be embraced, has to be elevated. His way will be made known through exuberance. You say, what does that mean? When you just overflow with Him, He cannot be denied. Hmm? Now, when I was younger, the little kids would get up and sing Bubbling Over. Remember that, Aunt Lynn? Bubbling over, bubbling over, my cup is full and bubbling over. For the Lord saved me, I'm as happy as can be. My cup is full and bubbling over. Man, I can't believe I remembered the words. <laughs> you know the Lord helped me right there. Uh, we sing that song. And guess what? There were people in the church house. It was bubbling over on them. It's good when it gets out of the cup and into the saucer. That's how His way will be made known. When you're just bubbling over with the goodness of the Lord, uh, they take note in that. Listen, they've seen religion. They've seen church. Uh, they've heard about this preacher that fell. They've heard about this ministry that's went wrong. Uh, they've seen it and seen it and seen it. Uh, they've come to this conclusion. The only people who go to church is hypocrites. Uh, what they need to see is Him uh, and Him bubbling over in our lives. Uh, 
Now in Acts 4.13, I just preached on this a couple weeks ago. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John uh, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled uh, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Boy, wouldn't it be a blessing if they just started taking knowledge we'd been with the Lord. When Moses came down off the mountain was speaking to the Lord, they had to put a veil over his face because his face shone. There was just something about him. When we leave the house of God, we ought to look different. Uh, when there's exuberance of the Lord coming out of us, his way will be made known. Then I thought about this. How's his way going to be made known? He must be expressed. How do we express him, preacher? Well, this psalm gives us a little insight. We express him by praise. Look at verse number 3. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Look at verse 5. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Can I say that'll still work? If we we'll just brag on the Lord. You know something I learned a long time ago? If we'll talk to lost people like we talk to saved people, it'll impact them. Now, they'll do everything they can to get out of the conversation. We have no problem walking up to Dr. Phil. Boy, isn't the Lord good? He'll say, yeah, man, I love this stuff. Yeah. Huh? Well, we have no problem saying, boy, wasn't service is good? God sat down amongst us. God blessed. Don't you like that one song they sang? And did? We, why don't we talk to lost people like that? Say, boy, God's been good. We was down at the church house yesterday. He showed up. Uh, folks got to getting uh, excited and got to shouting. Uh, altars got filled up. God was just good. The choir sang this song. and that. You know what happened? They'll think, boy, something's got to be happening down there. Because right. I know a lot of people go to church and they don't talk like that. Mm -mm. His way will be made known if we express it. If we praise the Lord for what great things He has done. Hmm? Listen, the world is truly just looking for something that's real. They gravitate to something that seems like it's real and to find out it's not real and then they lose hope in anything that really is real. Huh? I feel sorry for people that get caught up in movements. You've never seen that Hillsong documentary. That'll spread some light on a lot of stuff. It'll help you to understand a lot of things where they know how to turn the temperature at certain times in the service to get people to respond. And how they write music and have melodies that cause people to react in certain ways. And they have worked on the psychology of all of this to get people to respond in certain ways. And then when people find out they were manipulated... Good luck trying to get them in church again. You know what will? The Lord. When they see Him. You know what I find about, out about all of those outfits? Pick a name. All those feel-good contemporary churches, they never preach that if you come to know Jesus, there'll be a change. They preach you are loved and you are accepted. Well, you are loved with an everlasting love. And the Bible says it is a blessing to be accepted in the beloved. We are accepted after we get born again. And therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. When somebody gets saved, there's a change. Now, Brother Josh, that don't mean uh, when somebody gets saved immediately. There's uh, some people, they got a lot of baggage, and it takes, uh, you know, a little time for them to grow. And there's, but they'll get there. Hmm? When you first got saved, you was a mess. But look at you. Don't tell me the Holy Ghost can't do a work. Huh? I mean, he knocked off them rough edges and started working on you. Now you're going over to jail and telling folks about Jesus uh, and you show up on visitation and uh, oh, what a blessing. God did a work in your life. 
I'm not promoting him. I'm promoting the change I've seen the Lord doing him. But I watch all of that crowd, and they claim to know Jesus, and they still got spikes all in their face. They wear rainbow colored hair. They dress so Im- immodest. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing to see what they go to church like. That's how I know God's not in it. Nobody in your Bible that ever came to Jesus left the same way. Even those that rejected him left different. Hmm? When I say, listen, when Jesus moves in, he starts changing you. How are we going to express him by praising him? I'm talking about genuine praise. Letting them know what Jesus has done for us. Tell them what garbage dump you was at when Jesus came by your way. And show them what Jesus has done in your life. You say, preacher, I can't do that because I got some, some problems in my life. Well, get them straightened out with Jesus and then go out there and promote Jesus. He must be expressed. He's expressed through praise. He's expressed through publishing the gospel. That's why we go out on Monday. That's why we have all these tracts and all these packets out here about showing people how to be born again so you can hand them out, give them out, give them flash drives out. Why? It's all about getting the gospel out. And then he's expressed by proving to this world what he's done in our life. Hmm? I remember back in the 70s, there was a bumper, and you know, I, I got a real issue. I mean, if you want to have bumper stickers all over your car, go ahead. But I got a real problem paying $50,000 for a vehicle and then putting all bun- a bunch of stickers on it, you know? But if you're going to put bumper stickers on there about Christianity, make sure what they see inside matches up with what's on the outside. I've seen cars have bumper stickers on there about uh, 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 Jesus, uh, uh, something about the, the Lord and, and, and the, the, there's so much smoke coming out of that car I'm thinking man that car's on fire and you get up and everybody in there has got one lit up and they're going out, going to town you know, puffing away you know? you're not promoting Jesus huh? you're promoting a, 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 another Jesus that Paul warned about in Galatians but hey I remember a bumper sticker came out and said if you were tried for being a Christian would there be enough evidence to find you guilty Hmm? You ought to have enough proof in your life Amen. that Jesus changed your life. Amen. Ephesians 5 says this, verse number 8, For ye were sometimes darkness. Do you remember where you were before Jesus found you? But now are ye light in the Lord. Aren't you glad he found you? Walk as children of light. Verse number 9 says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Verse 10, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Your life ought to prove you have the fruit of the Spirit in you and your life ought to reprove the fruits of the darkness. Hmm? I wonder, will His way be made known in our area? See, it's up to us. I get in trouble when I make statements like I'm about ready to make, but I do not apologize for the statement I'm about ready to make. I believe in every area God's got a candlestick. And I believe the candlestick for our area is us. I know there are other churches, and I pray for them, and I hope God's a blessing and saving folks, but I, hey, if I thought they was a candlestick, I'd close up shop and, and, and be there. I believe God has ordained this little hill to change Florence, Kentucky. But my dear friends, if we don't go make his way known, we'll not have no impact. I got a little vexed. Anybody ever get vexed? I get a little vexed. Um, The Bible says where much is given, much is required. And sometimes knowing what I know about the Bible gets me in trouble. I get vexed. I do not watch the Catholic network on TV. It vexes me because I know they're promoting poison. And I know good moral people believe that and 
if somebody doesn't reach them with the gospel, they're going to think that they were okay and they're going to die and go to hell, and that vexes me. I can't watch a lot of the so-called Christian programming because it vexes me because it's promoting non-truths. I got vexed today. Her family, we went and ate at Cracker Barrel, and I didn't get vexed there. I got full there. I ate too much. Uh, you ever had a country boy breakfast? I hadn't, but I did today. You'd like it. They just bring everything. They bring you this big slab of ham and three eggs and pancakes and biscuits and gravy and, you know, I ate. It's coming out of my ears, bro. So we pull out. We come over to 18. There were three police officers directing traffic to get people out of Seven Hills. Brother Andy, how do you all ever get home? That's a mess. But it vexed me that all those people went there and heard non-truths today. And it took three police officers directing traffic to get that crowd out of there. Now listen, a lot of people go there because they want to be told they're okay just like they are. A lot of people go there because they're easing their conscience. They can go there and they can still go have their beers and they can still go play poker and they can still go smoke their cigars and they can still go live wicked. But they went to church. Hmm? Uh, uh, listen, Miss Annette's worked with some of the people that are part of some of the ministry over one gal she works with has got the foul, or used to work with, has got the foulest mouth you ever heard in your life. She never once went into the sanctuary over there. She just, she just volunteered to work in the nursery all the time. Huh? Brother Randy can tell you he's worked with people that's went to those kind of churches that drink and have no problem with drinking. You know, they go to church. That vexes me. Because people have been made twofold the child of hell. They think they're okay. And they're never going to hear anything from the pulpits that will ever challenge them according to their lifestyle. Because in order to pay for those facilities, they need people. That's why a lot of our Southern Baptist churches, we used to have some great Southern Baptist churches in Northern Kentucky. We used to have some men of God that would rear back and preach the Word of God. But those men, if they're still in the pulpit, a lot of them have been replaced, but if they're still in the pulpit, they no longer preach that way because they've grown to a position in, in, in the church that they don't want to upset anybody. I promise you that you won't hear any message like you heard this morning in those churches. Uh, why? They don't want to offend anybody. Can I say that Jesus said he didn't come to bring peace to the sword? doctrine divides the word of God will challenge people and your flesh will not like preaching from the word of God there are times that God's going to get on your toes there are going, there are going to be times he's going to stomp you huh listen I have sat in church and a preacher peeling my hide off uh, you say what did you do get mad at the preacher Oh, I hugged his neck and thanked him for preaching the word of God uh, I got right with the Lord and let God help me from the word of God but if the word of God offends people, they'll have to be offended. But you know what will happen? They can't get away from it. Because the, the one that is wielding the sword, the word of God, the Holy Ghost, does a work. And they may try to run from it, but they can't run from him. And getting offended might be the best thing that ever happened to them. Because they'll know something is real and something is true. All of a sudden, the feel-good stuff doesn't, doesn't matter. You say, preacher, can you really... If somebody goes to one of them churches, and, and, and they really, if they hear truth, they, they want to stay and hear truth? Well, ask Brandon. Brandon will tell you he should go to one of them feel-good churches until he came here. And he said, this was what he'd been looking for. Huh? Huh? Listen, you can't improve upon truth. An old-fashioned, old-time worship. Heaven help us when we start taking it for granted. Heaven help us when we come to church and somebody don't have a song. God's been so good to us, we ought to come in saying, boy, I hope he asks if somebody's got a song. I'm going to sing tonight. I hope the preacher asks for testimony. I'm going to stand up and brag on how good Jesus has been. It don't matter if they've heard you brag on him a hundred times or a thousand times. Keep bragging on him. Because that's how his way will be made known. Shame on us if we don't take full advantage 
of the privileges afforded us and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, if we keep it in here, shame on us because we're to take it out there so they can know this wonderful Savior that you and I have a relationship with. Our heart's desire ought to be that the Lord's way be known in all the earth. It starts in our Jerusalem, our Judea, our Samaria, and the other most parts of the world. God help us to be a light, to let people know. You don't have to act like a freak. Just be yourself and throw a little Jesus on it. It'll help somebody. Hmm? Never be ashamed of him because I read where he's going to be ashamed of us for his father if we're ashamed of him for the world. Let people know how much Jesus means to you. And you never know. Somebody might trust the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, there's nothing greater than knowing that God used you to impact somebody else for his glory. Our desire ought to be that the Lord's way is known. Do you know him tonight? And if you do, what are you doing to promote him to this lost and dying world? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, why don't you come get a song of invitation? Brother Daniel, come to the piano. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. Maybe somebody here tonight's been a real blessing to you and helped you in your walk with God. Maybe you need to go to them during this invitation and just thank you, tell them thank you for being a blessing. Maybe somebody's been an inspiration to you. Maybe you need to go to them and say, I want you to know you've really been an inspiration in my life. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe somebody has really caused you to understand a little bit more about Jesus. It's all right to go and let them know thank you for being a blessing for allowing the Lord to use you because it's impacted my life. Boy, the altar's full. There's room for you. You just mind the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer. They've got a song ready. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Help us, Lord, to be instruments that causes your way to be made known. Lord, to you are the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. And God, help us to share that to a lost and dying world blessing this invitation speak to hearts have your will and way we'll thank you for it in jesus name amen do you struggle to find good bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions if so head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on bookstore where we have a ton of resources and as always thanks for listening